Hello guys and welcome to the fourth part of the texturing in Blender 2.8 video tutorial. I'm the creator of the game called Snappy Mouse Run and in the previous video we covered the basics of texture painting. In this video I will go into more advanced texture paint features and techniques. There is one particular brush stroke I didn't cover in the last video and it's the curve stroke. The curve stroke is a bit more special. Here you can define and reuse your own paint curves and paint them. These are not the same as object curves, don't get confused by the term, these are paint curves. I don't have any paint curves yet, so I'll create one. I'll name it my paint curve. To draw a curve you need to place curve points first, hold control and press the right mouse button and if you hold and drag you'll get these handles too. Multi-select works the usual way by holding shift or you can select or deselect all with the A key. Moving points around works by selecting a triangle with the left mouse button or by pressing G. Although we are painting the curve in the 3D viewport, the curve itself is on a 2D plane. So you can constrain the movement on X and Y only, which makes sense since you can draw the curve also in the image editor. Now the point handles are a bit confusing and sometimes in the way when you try to move the whole point. The easiest way to tweak them is by using only the right mouse button to move one handle and shift right mouse button to align and to move both handles. Rotate the handles only with the shift right mouse button combination, don't use the R key for the handles. Scaling the handles works by pressing the S key. If you want to delete a point, make sure the whole point is selected and press X. Let's create a nice looking curve. When you're happy with the curve, place the view and curve into position and press enter or control left mouse button to draw the curve. Apply it where you like it. Remember this is just a stroke option, all other brush options like radius, strength, fall off, etc. are respected as well. The paint curves may be useful from time to time, especially since they are reusable, but it can be frustrating to create them since there is no undo redo functionality. That's the biggest pain point. Ok, at this point you probably wonder if I can draw the curve using the draw tool then maybe I can fill the inside of the curve using the fill tool. Well, no. It's a bit more complicated. The fill tool just fills everything. Before I show you how to fill the inside of a paint curve, I will explain the texture and texture mask options first. Let's change the stroke back to dots and go to the texture option. As with paint curves, don't get fooled by the name texture. It has nothing to do with the object texture. It is just a brush specific setting, a brush texture. This means we can define a specific pattern instead of using this simple circle. I don't have any brush textures defined yet, so I'll create one. I name it my brush texture. We see it's all black and if I try to paint with it on my object, nothing happens. We can edit the brush texture in the properties on the texture tab. The drop down at the top indicates that those are brush textures and have nothing to do with the object texture. My brush texture is pre-selected and the texture type is currently set to image or movie. This means that we can select a loaded image as a brush texture under the image tab. Or we can change the texture type to one of the presets. Clouds is very often used, so I will use it for this demonstration. This is the preview of the default clouds. Let's try to paint it with the neutral white color. Let's adjust the radius, adjust strength. The brush now paints the cloud pattern. Even define a custom falloff. All other brush settings are also respected. But things get really interesting if we use the color ramp on the color. We get this slider that represents the value range of the generated cloud texture from 0 to 1. By default there are two handles on each side. The handles are also called stops and the stops are numerated. We can select them with the left mouse button or switch them by changing the active stop number. Also down here is the active stop position on the slider and the stop color with its alpha or transparency. Now how does the color ramp work? Imagine the pattern is made of pixels that range in values from 0 to 1. With this slider we defined a mapping from the pixel value to an actual color. That's why it's called a color ramp. Let's see how the color ramp is currently set up. We have a transition from black, fully transparent, to a solid white over the whole value range. Which gives us this image here. If you paint we get something like this. Now let's say that I want everything that's under 0.5 to be black fully transparent and everything that's above 0.6 to be solid white. Everything in between 0.5 and 0.6 is again the transition between those colors. The preview looks like this. Although we cannot see the transparency on the preview, we know that those black parts will be transparent since we set the black to be also transparent. If we paint, we get something like this. Very useful for painting splashes. This was the cloud preset, let's try something else, let's say we want to imitate wood, create a new texture, I'll call it my wood imitation. 
Let's edit the texture, select it in the properties, change the preset to wood, set pattern to band noise, increase size until we have something we can work with, looks like wood, turn on color ramp, the first stop should be solid, no transparency this time, and also have a dark brown color. This color should be mapped to the lowest value 0. The second stop, also no transparency, a lighter brown color and we want that everything that has a higher value than 0.05 has this lighter color. This looks more like a wood imitation and if we paint we get something like this. If we need a darker texture we can darken everything by changing the main color from white to something grayish. No, it's darker wood. Very similar is the texture mask setting. I will create a new texture and call it texture mask. The texture is black so nothing happens when I try to draw. The mask works like an opacity mask and the level of whiteness defines the opacity of the underlying brush. In other words, white parts will get painted. To edit the texture we need the properties texture tab again, but this time switch the mode to brush mask. Select my texture mask. We've got the same presets as with brush textures. Let's go with clouds again and set the color ramp as before. First stop 0.5, the transparency doesn't matter at all, it's ignored for the mask, so I'll set alpha to 1. Color should be grayscale only, so make sure saturation is set to 0. Now you can easily control the mask opacity with the color value. For the first stop we'll set it to 0, so no opacity. Second stop at 0.6, saturation to 0 and color value to 1 or full opacity. We get the same pattern as before and now this mask determines the opacity of the brush with its black and white pattern. If I draw, only the white parts are drawn of the underlying brush. The brush still has the texture setting active, so this texture gets masked. All other brush settings are also respected as well. If we remove the texture, a solid color gets masked. Now back to the question, how do we fill a paint curve? This is our previously created curve. Maybe you've guessed it, we need to create a mask image from the curve and use it as a brush texture mask. Let's clear the texture settings first. Now create a new image, I'll name it my curve image. 512 times 512 will be sufficient for this simple curve. Set color to black. Now select the whole curve by pressing A and press G in order to place it somewhere in the middle. It's not so important if it's not perfectly aligned. Now pick a white color, set radius to 5 pixels, set the fall off to this brick shape so there is no fading out, hold control and left mouse click to draw the curve. Now switch to the fill tool and fill the inside. The edges are a bit rough so in order to smooth the edges out go back to the draw tool, set the fall off back to the fade out preset, increase the radius to 10 and with the curve at the same position hold control and left mouse click to apply the curve with the fade out. Finished. This will be our mask. Now a very important step, save the image. The images are not saved automatically when saving the project. Save the image either to a file or if you want to use it only in this project just go to image, save all images. It will save the image into the blender project file. Change the image back to the actual object texture image. We are done here. Now create a new texture mask, I'll name it my curve mask. Under properties make sure the mask type is set to image or movie and under image select the my curve image. Now if I select a color and try to draw onto the surface we see the curve but it does not follow the brush. Undo this and let's change the mask mapping from tiled to view plane. Now we need to change the fall off so the brush isn't faded out. Take again the brick preset and much better. Ok, so that way you can draw a filled paint curve. It was also a nice exercise to show you how everything works together. If you wonder where your paint curves and textures get stored, go to the outliner and change display mode to blender file like I showed you in the previous video and here they are. There is one more feature I want to show you in this video that is really helpful when you want to restrict the painting only to a certain part of the mesh. You just enable the face selection masking by pressing the paint mask button, deselect all by pressing A. Now you can use the box select by pressing B and select the area where the painting should be restricted to. Now I can be sure that I'm only painting on the selected surface area and nowhere else. You don't even have to use the box selection in texture paint to select the area. Just press tab for a quick switch to edit mode, select the faces the usual way, for instance Ctrl L to select all connected and switch back to texture painting by pressing tab. Quick edit mode selection switch, a really really useful feature. 
That's it for this video. If you haven't already, make sure to check out my previous video on texture painting basics where I go through all the basic texture paint settings. In the next video we will finally extract the texture from the background images using a method called projection painting. As always, thank you very much for watching, give a like and subscribe if you found this video useful and want to see more content like this and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.